Hello and welcome to making the most powerful character in Star Wars part 2. Now if you haven't seen part 1 or episode 1, you do genuinely need to check that out. I know a lot of YouTubers say that just to get more views on the other video, but it would genuinely not make much sense and you really need the context from the other video before you understand this one. But without further ado, I will assume you've clicked off if you need to, and we are going to take the spinning ability of the Inquisitor's lightsabers. Now, this is where you need the context, because obviously this would only apply if the Calcaster's saber is in its dual wield like part, when both sabers are connected. Then it would have the circle around the handle, like um, the Inquisitor's lightsabers, and it would be able to spin for whatever reason. We see the Inquisitors use it a lot, and it seems to be relatively useful. Now, we also need it because it is partially responsible for their ability to fly with the lightsaber, which is what I want to take as well. Now, they can do this because of some uh, technology within the hilt of the saber, which is similar to how speeders float, uh, not necessarily because of the lightsaber spin, but that is also required. So, we're going to take the helicopter ability from the Inquisitor's lightsabers as well. Now, I did just say that that helicopter ability does not 100% come from... Uh, they're spinning, but we do need them to spin as well uh, to be able to fly like the helicopter that they do, which gets memed a lot, but, I mean, I kind of like it. Now, thirdly, we are going to take Grandmaster Yoda's Tutor Minus. Now, I believe the definition for this ability is being able to absorb energy with your hands, because Vader blocking the blaster bolts is classed as Tutor Minus, but we're going to take Yoda's. As I believe his is the strongest, as we can see, he can block Count Dooku and Palpatine's Force Lightning with his bare hands. And this is obviously very useful if we don't have our lightsaber activated or even on us, and we need to deflect some Force Lightning for whatever reason. I would also assume that Yoda, like Vader, would be able to do it to Blaster Bolt, so yes, a very, very useful Force ability. Now, speaking of Vader, I believe he probably has the strongest Force Choke and Crush in canon, so we're going to take that from him. Vader uses his force choke very, very often to show his dominance over his non-force sensitive allies and enemies, I guess. And as also a way to kill his enemies very, very easily without even being near them with next to no effort. So a very useful ability. And if you would watch the last video, I've paired uh, this character with the balance of the father. So it doesn't matter that we are using dark side abilities. Our character would not get corrupted because we have the balance of the father. Now, quite an underrated ability now is Ezra's connection to animals. We see it so, so often how easily Ezra can connect to animals once he initially starts to do so, and this is very, very useful. We see it saves him in the season finale of Rebels. Well, not necessarily saves him, but saves the Rebels, and he goes off with them with the Space Whales. Um, He connects to the Loaf Wolves and the things I've forgotten the name of that I showed the pictures of first. So, yeah, it's a very useful one to save yourself from the animals, to save yourself from fighting while near some animals and yeah it's a very cool ability as well to be able to connect to all the animals around you i think it's very good now a unique ability is the ability to breathe underwater like kit fisto can now i know that someone like admiral akbar would be able to do this as well but there's a reason i've picked kit fisto is because i'm taking two abilities from him here i want to be able to breathe underwater like kit fisto and i also want the technology in his lightsaber that enables it to activate whilst underwater to make the most powerful character possible, you've got to enable them to use all of their powers and skill possible in any situation. And if they end up finding themselves underwater, they need to be able to live, for one, and fight if needed. And Kit Fisto's lightsaber we see in the Clone Wars 2003 and 2008 can activate underwater. And obviously we can see that as he is a species that can breathe underwater, he can breathe underwater. So a very good ability to have. Now, the next one, the master of the mind tricks, Obi-Wan Kenobi's mind trick ability. Think, if someone's trying to sell you death sticks, or this character death sticks, how's he going to get out of it? Well, he now has Obi-Wan Kenobi's mind trick ability. Obviously, he would have learned this from his master, Qui-Gon Jinn, who we see use it in the Phantom Menace very well, or, well, not very well, actually fails to do it on Watto, but... That is because of what a species Toydarian cannot be mind tricked. Um, judging by the fact Qui-Gon attempted to do it, we know he can do it. And then we can assume he taught Obi-Wan, which we see him use in Attack of the Clones, A New Hope. 
and uh, throughout the Clone Wars as well. So a very useful ability to get yourself out of situations without resulting to violence. A lot of these abilities that I'm picking are actually to get out of situations. And the next ability is going to be Kylo Ren's Force Freeze slash Force Stasis. Now I say Force Freeze instead of Stasis because there's two forms of Stasis that I'm picking here. And Kylo Ren only represents Force Freeze. We see he's very strong at doing this as he can do it to Rey, Poe Dameron and Poe Dameron's Blaster at the same time. A very, very cool ability. I wish we saw potentially a little bit more of it. Um, throughout the whole franchise to be honest but I'm glad it got introduced it was very cool to see it in the start of The Force Awakens very hyped to see how powerful Kylo Ren actually was and yes this is very useful as he can literally freeze a lightsaber mid-fight freeze a blaster mid-fight freeze a person for whatever reason and yeah obviously very very useful now the next Force Stasis ability I want is Cal Kestis's Force Stasis but not freezing, only slowing something. We see this in Jedi Fallen Order when he needs to slow items and people to get around them, use them to get over them, or just to help him in battle. Now, Force Freeze from Kylo Ren is much more useful in battle, but I need Cal Kestis' stasis ability to slow things down in certain situations, and I'm not sure if Kylo Ren can do that because we don't see it. Now, in Jedi Fallen Order, we come across many levels where we need something to be moving, but very, very slowly. So Cal Kestis' stasis ability is very, very useful to a character in many situations. One of the levels being where you have to jump on that kind of train thing. I don't know what to call it. The next thing is going to be Palpatine's Force Scream. Very useful as it helps him kill literally three Jedi Masters in about seven seconds. So it's clearly a very powerful ability and just something to give my character the upper hand before the fight even starts really. I know a lot of people aren't actually aware that this is an ability and they just thought Palpatine screams for some random reason and then is so powerful he can kill the Jedi Master so quickly. No, that is actually his force scream ability, it's a real thing and it shocked Sazie Tin, Agent Cola and Kit Fisto so much that they didn't really last very long. It shocked Kit Fisto the least as he was the most powerful of the three that died uh, obviously Mace Windu didn't really get shocked at all, and yeah, it really helped Palpatine a lot, so I want that. Now, for some more weapons, and what better character to take weapons from than the heavily equipped Din Djarin slash Mando. Now, I want the Whistling Birds, as when he's in a situation where it looks like he has nowhere to go, no possible way to win, the Whistling Birds save him very, very often, so they're very useful. If somehow, with all the abilities my character has got, gets to a situation where they're getting overwhelmed, easy way to get out of it. And another weapon I want to take from Mando is his Flamethrower. I believe that his is potentially more powerful than Boba Fett, Jango Fett, Previsitor, etc., as it was made at the latest date, so that would make sense for it to be potentially more powerful. Um, so yeah, flamethrower, obviously very useful, not necessarily just for fighting, but if you need to burn anything for whatever reason, obviously you've got a flamethrower. And it can be used in combat as well, as you've literally got fire coming from your wrists. Now, the last but not least weapon I want to take from Mando is his little grapple cable kind of thing. We see him use it against Ahsoka, we see him use it in the prison um, episode in season one i don't remember what chapter it was he used it against the like the guard droids very useful can tie up an opponent and finish the fight very very easily and obviously unless they are someone as skilled as ahsoka they probably won't escape but with that being said that is it for part two of making the most powerful character in star wars please let me know some more things i should add to the character for episode three and as you can see here not that many of you watching are actually subscribed, so I'd appreciate it if you did. Whilst you're at it, like the video, comment like I just said, and yeah, thanks for watching in a bit.